everyone and welcome to How Did You Show. Today I have a very, very fascinating guest with me on the show, uh, one and only uh, Gary Das, who is a uh, award-winning a mortgage uh, broker, um, mentor, coach, and a social media expert, and so much more. But I'll uh, let you I'll let you introduce ourselves for those who don't know Gary Das. Hi, Gary, and welcome. Hey, Dylan, are you okay? Yeah, very good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, all good. Can I grumble? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'm very excited to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here and having a chat and catching up as always. Nice, nice. I'm sure you're going to help a lot of people today. Uh, so you are very well known as a the mortgage expert. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about you and your company? So you run a company called Active Mortgage. Is that correct? Right. Correct, yep. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more, a bit more about you and your company for those who don't know Gary or your company? Yeah, of course. I, um, I became mortgage qualified back in 2003 um, with Barclays or what is now, or Woolwich, what is now Barclays. Um, had a very career for a few years moving around from estate agents to mortgage brokerages to running a business for somebody else for almost a year before I then went self-employed in 2006. Uh, we got hit by the credit crunch in 2008 and mortgages just disappeared overnight. Uh, so I ended up in 2009 pivoting from mortgages to life insurance, critical illness, income protection, which I'd always done off the back of mortgages. Uh, built that business uh, to sort of nearly seven figures by 2015. Had to make made 10 years of errors really, but still had success. Uh, but built a business that I hated um, for various different reasons. But when I moved home, we'd had our most profitable year in 2015. And having had previous self-cert mortgages, which just in case your audience don't know, pre-credit crunch, you could walk into your bank and say, I want to borrow this, 300 grand. And they would just let you sign a little bit of paper and out you would walk a couple of months later would be 300 grand and hey presto, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. And it was that simple. Wow. Um, and I got my first three mortgages using that method. And because I've been doing insurance for seven years, my wife and I wanted to move into the home that we are now in. I'd had my most profitable year. I went to my bank and my bank turned around and said, no, you can't move because you've left all your profit in the business. You haven't withdrawn it as personal income. We can't use it. Uh, and me wow. being a bit of a dog with a bone, I rang around 180 lenders over the course of three days and basically found just a multitude of stuff that's available for business owners, entrepreneurs, property investors, self-employed individuals. Uh, and I thought, well, hang on a minute. If I've been in the industry for this long, I've, you know, didn't, I didn't know this was available, then there must be other self-employed people who would feel the same pains and struggles that I kind of did. So yeah. I'd always been biding my time since 2009 to get back to mortgages but I just didn't want to do what everybody had always done, rely on estate agents and buy in leads from the internet and all this stuff. So when we moved into this house in the October, uh, within three months, I downsized my team from 13 to three. I reopened January 2016 as self-employed mortgages um, and just went gung-ho 12 hour days for a year. Um, fast forward to now. Uh, I've written an Amazon best-selling book called The Self-Employed Mortgage Guide. I've got a team of 13 based all over the UK. Oh, look at that. Right on cue. Thanks, Linka. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the audio book now as well, so the audio book's available on Amazon as well. Fantastic. Um, and, yeah, we, we won, we won, the self, we won um, Mortgage Strategies Best Small Broker in 2019. Uh, I now focus mostly on the marketing and the business development and helping and coaching and mentoring my advisors. And as I say, we're, we're a team of 13 and in the next few weeks, we should be 16 uh, as I'm taking on three more advisors. Um, but I'm doing it differently in the sense of, you know, being in the property world that you're in. Um, I've got a self-employed expert who works mostly really closely with me. I've got buy to let, I've got service accommodation, I've got bridging, I've got commercial, I've got a life insurance advisor, I've got a will writer. And all of this has kind of grown mostly within the last 12 months. Um, but I'm a massive believer in an expert in each seat, which then means that we can provide the best level of service and get the best results for our clients. Because would you really want a hand surgeon yeah. doing heart surgery on you? Would you really want, you know, that kind of whole thing? And I think is just you need an expert in that field who does it day in, day out, portfolios, et cetera, and so on and so forth. 
So, yeah, it's been a, a fun journey. Um, wow. That's so fascinating, absolutely fascinating. As you said, that you found a niche in the market which was not, uh, not, no one was doing yet. And you were like, hold on a second, if I'm having these issues, there will be others who's having the same issues. So yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And then as you said, no, then you went through a little bit of up and downs as well because it was, it was a, a roller coaster. It's still a business. It is a, um, it's, a, it's a huge, huge thing as well. Like mortgages is, is that how, how many people in, in the country need, uh, they want mortgage? Would, would you say that roughly at least 50%, 60% of people want mortgage? Oh, probably more than that. Well, to give you an example, I think, you know, middle of last, well, end of last year, um, there were roughly 55,000 applications for mortgages done in a month. Wow. Um, across the whole industry. Obviously, we've been in tr- torrid times with Corona and covid um, but certainly things are now picking back up again at the present time. And we are absolutely busier than ever, which is why we need more people on the team. Um, and it's, yes, it's all good fun. Your, your hard work is paying off now. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, well, done. well, I'm watching your journey um, on the social a lot. And um, yeah, so you always look very busy. You also a father of three, which I can yep. see. You, um, and you have a beautiful wife. And um, so, yeah, like I can see that you are, you, you are balancing everything, learning how to, like showing how to, how to, how to balance everything. And it's, it's, it's not easy, but you still, you still got a smile on your face. You're still helping <laughs> so many people every day. I can see you're, con- you're putting your content out there. So, yeah. That's that's great. And so that's why I thought that you might be a really, really a perfect guest on the show today for the property beginners out there. (laughs) Yeah, of course, without a shadow of a doubt. And we work with clients, you know, we work with people who are literally starting out on their property journey um, that I've met through property events right the way through to millionaires and property trainers and people with huge amounts of property on their portfolio doing weird, wacky and wonderful, sexy strategies that... You know, so we cover all spectrums in that sense. And we're used to dealing with beginning, middle and end, shall we say. That's amazing. So for the beginners out there or for anybody who's listening and they are looking into, uh, to get a mortgage, there you go. You know where to go. Active mortgage. <laughs> Definitely. So when is your book coming out on Audible? Um, so it's out now. We just haven't done a kind of formal release for it. I recorded it at the back end of last year, um, several, seven painful hours sitting in just a tiny little cardboard box padded room for sound effects um yeah it was it was a hot and sweaty day let's just call it that but apparently it's it's good on audible and i i'm a big believer in if you're going to do an audio book you've got to read it yourself so yeah. oh, rather yeah. than getting someone else to because then you can put a little bit more passion and desire into it so i did i did it all myself which was good Fantastic. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. That's amazing. Okay, so um, Gary, so you are obviously so you have the active mortgage. You are coach. You're a mentor. Um, what else are you? <laughs> you are just, <laughs> you because you you just became a online summit expert as well, did you? Yeah. Well, I've um, because when I released my book in twenty seven, end of twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen, I had a lot of mortgage advisors reaching out to me for help. Um, and sort of asking, how am I doing these videos? Because that was the one big change that I made. I, I did marketing wrong for 10 years up until 2015. And I wanted to do it differently. And when I started again in 2016, I just started doing video on social media. Um, so I've got hundreds of videos out there. You know, through this whole corona environment, I've been going live at 8 o'clock every morning on my Gary Gas page um, on social media. And my reach has gone through the roof. It was 300 and 360,000 this morning when I looked on the last 28 days. Wow. Pre lockdown, it was forty thousand. Um, so it's just it's it's crazy because everyone's on their phones. We're all sitting at home and we're all yeah. you know they're all furloughed or whatever and trying to inspire and motivate others. But effectively, twenty eighteen, using social media with all these mortgage advisors reaching out for help, I just started a Facebook group, um, and that Facebook group's now thirteen hundred. I've got a hundred and eighteen online mentees that I talk through my six step process to building a mortgage brokerage. Uh, and yeah, exactly that. What happened? I talk about a niche and, and pivoting. Uh, I've spoken as mortgage pro is the branding that we've had since March of 2019 when I launched my podcast and when I launched my mentoring over the course of 12 months, I've then now got will writers, commercial advisors, financial planners, um, other people within financial services. So what we did about a month or so ago, we held an online summit. We had 300 people 
all out throughout the day watching 750 in the group we doubled at our database but we effectively expanded our niche from just helping mortgage professionals to focusing on financial services professionals um, so i'm just trying to change my industry because i think it's it needs updating it still acts like it's in the dark ages and it needs improving um, and yeah communities of, of 2000 plus people online mentees business podcast um it's all good fun industry. trying to trying to disrupt the industry without a doubt it definitely needs it crikey <laughs> <laughs> wow great well yeah as you say because everything is changing these days and mm. uh, we can't do uh, things in the same way that we used to in the past it just doesn't work anymore in many many ways so yeah we need heroes like you who's going to come and say no, we're not going to do this like this anymore. Let's do it your way. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're too kind, Lenka. You're too kind. Thank you. <laughs> well, you did it all. You really are. Sorry. <laughs> uh, now, so, okay. So we know that you, uh, you you became a social media expert. So anybody who um, who follow you um, or anybody will want to, who wants to follow, start following you, who will start following you. And they can learn so much from you in that sense as well. So there's so much to learn from you. Uh, but let's go back now for the and the main uh, question for the episode today. So name of the podcast called How Did You? So um, I was hoping that maybe you could give us some nice uh, tips today on how did you got your first residential mortgage and then how did you get your first buy to let mortgage and to see what is the difference for the beginners out there, what do you need, what sort of applications you need, etc., cetera, et cetera. And, yeah, cool. So yeah, how did I get my first mortgage? This is the crazy world that we used to live in pre-credit crunch. Ooh. I got for my first flat in 2006, 100% mortgage, no deposit. But even not, not even that, I actually got 125% mortgage because you used to be able to borrow more than the property's value because what the way in which they did it was they gave you uh, part of the mortgage would be on the actual mortgage and then effectively the deposit and the other little bit would be on a personal loan but over the mortgage term. Right. Now they've scrapped that. You can't get 100% mortgages anymore without having bank of mum and dad or guarantors or anything along those lines. So for buying a residential mortgage, it could be possible for you to get one with a 5% deposit. Personally, having 10% deposit is much better because you're going to find the interest rates are almost half what they would be with a 5% deposit. Really? Because you're then going to find more lenders available to you. Wow. Um, so a good place to start is having a 10% deposit. 10% of the property's value, 200 grand, you want a 20% deposit. Uh, you then want to make sure that you check your credit score or your credit history on a regular basis because the higher the score, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more of an indication just for general consumers. The lenders have their own internal scoring process that they will use. Uh, but having a decent credit score, making sure that you pay things on time, not late paying, not living in your overdraft. Uh, you know, if you have loans, credit cards, student loans, any outstanding balances, that's going to affect the amount that you can pay monthly on your mortgage. And therefore, it's going to affect the amount that you can potentially borrow. Mm -hmm. So keeping an eye on your credit history and everything is really, really important. I don't understand it in this country because Americans guard their credit history like it is just gold. But over here, it doesn't seem to be as key. Um, but I'm a massive advocate of it. Um, the third thing I would definitely say is then just understanding your circumstances. So... Let's take it from employed, first of all. If you're employed, then you're going to have your base. Plus, you might get some salary, some commission, some bonuses, some overtimes. Not all lenders will take all of your bonus, commissions, and overtimes. So they might, some lenders might only take 50%. And this is where speaking to a broker is absolutely key because different lenders have different sets of criteria. Mm. So... If you need to borrow the maximum, then you're going to want somebody who's going to be more flexible around those additional elements. Sure. If you're a sole trader, i.e. you're one person working on your own, perhaps recently gone self-employed, then you need to have at least 12 months trading as a sole trader. Mm -hmm. Ideally, if you've transitioned from employed to self-employed, having previous experience in the trade can be really, really useful. Um, and then once you've got that 12 months, ideally you want to have two years 
because it just shows that you're able to manage your business for a little bit longer and gives the lender a little bit more security. Mm -hmm. But one is fine. There's plenty of lenders that will do one. Um, it's just about making sure that you set yourself up for success and, and think about it as early as possible. And then if you're a limited company director, i.e. a business owner, you've got a limited company, if you own more than 25%, then you are classified by most lenders as self-employed. Because lots of business owners turn around and say, yeah, but I'm employed by my own company and yes. can I pay myself a wage for three months? And of course you can't. You're the owner. You decide what wage you pay yourself. Yeah. So if you own more than, with some lenders, it can be as low as 15%. Uh, but then you're then you're looking at the option of like I did your salary plus your net profit or potentially your salary plus your dividends uh, and this is where my whole ethos and the whole message of the book and everything that I've constantly talked about since 2016 is preparation is key six 12 18 even 24 months in advance of when you want to buy your residential home because there's more boxes to tick mm. the sooner you start the more opportunity you've got to put things right the less stressed you're going to feel later, the more you're going to be able to understand what happens. You know, and we work, we're working with clients now who are not buying for another 12, 18 months, but they want to make sure that they're, they've got targets in their business to perhaps aim for. They've got things in their personal profile that they want to make better. Um, and residential is harder than investing and buy to let. So any questions on really? residential, Lenka? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. the residential is much harder than buy to let. That's interesting. Is that because, well, obviously, because the buy to let is that business. Is that, is that because of that? So you've got a business and a personal, and then yep. you have a business. That's well, the, equally, the, the thing as well is with a buy to let, everything is dependent on the strategy that you're following and the rental income, perhaps, that the property is going to get. Where on a residential, you know, you're technically on a buy to let, your mortgage is being paid by somebody else. Mm. Yes, you still need it, and it still needs to, but on a residential home, awesome. you have to be able to afford it. So we assess your income, we expect your expenditure, and then you're left with an amount that you can afford. You know, if you've got a thousand pounds coming in, you've got five hundred pounds going out, your mortgage payment has to be within at least five hundred quid, or it needs yeah. to be less than that, because you need to have some money to live as well. Awesome. But your whole household living needs to be affordable. So the criteria is much, much harder on a residential home. Wow. That's, a, that's, that's an interesting point. And um, so what sort of applications do you need? Or what sort of, uh, what you, what, what you, what, what sort of things you actually need? So you said it, it's like, uh, so longer you're preparing, yeah, it's better. So you're looking at your credit score, um, as you said, for example, and then you don't want to live in your overdraft. Um, um, so what sort of um, paperwork do you need? Documents, yeah. Should, should think of, right, I need to start keeping this or I need this or that sort of thing I will need, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, you, we, we always get everything up front from a, from a client as early as we possibly can. So if you're employed, it's generally going to be three months pay slips, but there are some lenders who will allow one pay slip if you've just started a new job, for example. Um, so kind of the general rule of thumb, we're looking at three months pay slips, we're looking at, one or two years worth of company accounts or tax computations and tax year overviews, which is what you get from the HMRC or your accountant as a self-employed individual, mm -hmm. so tax computations or tax year overviews, uh, three months bank statements because they want to see, you know, the incomings and the outgoings, the expenditure and how you're living and how you're balancing your life. Credit report. I can't remember if I said that, uh, proof of deposit. Before you start looking to buy or applying for a mortgage, you want to make sure that you've actually got your deposit in the bank account. Mm -hmm. Even if it's coming from bank of mum and dad, you know, your mum and dad or, or a relative will have to sign a letter to say that they've got the funds available and that everything's all A-OK -okay with it and that they're gifting it to you as a non-repayable gift. Um, so that's probably the main core documents. And then depending on your individual circumstances, there might be a couple of other little bits and bobs that we need. Interesting. And now in regards to the, um, the buy to let now one. So for people who's thinking about, because obviously this is for property beginners, but or only in, anybody in property, um, if they want to scale, I mean, I was talking to my friend that day, Andy Thomas, who was mentioning that many people who uh, wants to go to, um, they, who they want to scale, for example, and they have a one set of a paperwork for example, and all the application, etc., ready for one by two led. If you're thinking about scaling, it's um, apparently it's really, really handy if you have your 
documents always ready. Just keep updating your address, for example. So what would you recommend to, uh, in regards to that? Like, you know, in, for someone who wants to scale, is that correct? I mean, like, is that, um, would that help mortgage brokers if people have everything nicely ready? Or how does... Oh, I'm not, I'm not making much sense. <laughs> no, you are without a shadow of a doubt. It's definitely, this is where preparation is absolutely key. And the sooner you start engaging with a broker and, and you know, one of my team, etc., the more we can help you and the more you can put things right. Because every single person, you know, we've done probably, we're probably, I haven't actually looked, but I would say since 2016, we're probably approaching now the thousands of applications um, that we've put in for people. So, I would say that yes, there's commonalities between some of those applications, but it's, there's always different pieces to the puzzle. Always. You'll never get two puzzles that are exactly the same 100%. There will always be one little thing in the credit history, in the past, in the portfolio, in the property deal. You know, there's so many different pieces. The sooner you start preparing, the better. So the more you can have ready in relation to your basic documents, the better. Um, and understanding those requirements is, you know, really, really key to having everything ready. Mm. Fantastic. Okay. So for anybody out there, just be ready, <laughs> basically. Just be ready all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's, there is something, and I don't know if you want me, we've, we've got a guide in terms of the seven mistakes that most people make when buying and investing in property. Mm -hmm. And part of that is a list of all the key documents that you need to have how they should look, like bank statements, for example. They should always have your address on. They should always have your name on. They should always have the account number and the sort code on them. Some banks, when you print them through their online portals, don't include that data. Ah. And therefore, you as a person gets really stressed because you've provided what's been asked for, but it doesn't meet criteria. Hmm. So if anybody, we can, I can obviously share a link with you or if anybody wants to get that kind of guide, then it's available without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, amazing. Well, we can pop that somewhere in the comments as well. That'll be amazing. Very helpful. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, that is, that is, that is the thing, isn't it? Like, um, just be, just be ready, basically, as you said. And, and if you don't know what, as you said, people can get stressed because they give you what you ask for, but it actually doesn't have all the information and you said they can get stressed and all that. And just to make it easier for them, just, just read properly what we need from you, basically. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, it just makes it life easier for them, for yourself as well. So this is the way, the way I always look at this, and it's, it's uh, uh, well, to be fair, I always look at it in this way, but I've just come up with this analogy now because I think fitness and business have got so much in common, and I find so many commonalities before it. So how many of you, and maybe you've done this too, Lenka, when you want to go on holiday, you leave your diet till the last minute. Mm -hmm. and you've got to get in your bikini in, in a week's time or two weeks' time, or I want to put me, me speedos, not that I wear speedos on, but you want to put your swim shorts on in one or two weeks' time. How much more stressful is it trying to lose that weight before you go on holiday? Oh, yeah. Whereas we all know we should probably start 12 weeks, three months before you're about to go away, yeah. and you might have to sacrifice a little bit of chocolate or a couple of weeks drinking or whatever, but you've given yourself long enough to get there. Achieve the goal. But we all go through the pain and the stress of waiting two or three weeks before we go away and thinking, oh my God, I need to not eat now. <laughs> it's the same with buying property or getting a mortgage. Yeah. I need my bikini body, but I only have two days left. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all do it. <laughs> well, preparation is the key. Preparation is exactly. The key. <laughs> okay. So you also mentioned you also do podcasts. So you do podcasts mm -hmm. as well for those who... Um, obviously wants to know more about um, uh, mortgages or how to do mortgages, etc. So what is the name of your show for those listeners? Uh, so my, my actual podcast, and it's a bit of a, my podcast is called the Financial Pro Podcast. Nice. Um, but I've not spoken about mortgages once on it. So it's a business podcast for my industry, which is the misconception. But didn't um, you have so for mortgages? No, no, I've never done one for mortgages. Really? Yeah, but who'd want to sit there and listen to a mortgage podcast? It's like, we have spoken about taking all my videos, because I've got hundreds of videos talking about mortgages, and then just putting out mini short caption episodes and creating an active mortgage podcast yeah. with just all of those little content. So there'll be like two, three minute episodes that you can just ram through and get all of the gold and all the information from it. Very clear. So 
I might do that actually. I might task my team to take the audio from all That's of them and just create a little good idea. Good quick idea. run series series of episodes. So anyway, so you got this purely about business. Yes. I, so I, I focus on. In the beginning, I do apologize. That's bad. Of no, me. well, it was the it was when we launched it last year. It was the Mortgage Pro podcast, and That's then this year we rebranded it to the Financial Pro podcast. Um, but I've got thirty five thousand. I've got just over 50,000 downloads in 35 countries. Um, we got number two in business when we launched, but it is very niche because the name, because I want to change my industry. Yeah. Um, but equally there's a, there's a huge opportunity to go worldwide. So I'm keeping it financial because I've got people reaching out now in Australia, New Zealand, Dubai, America, Canada. Um, and I want to try and change their industries as well as mine. That's amazing. It's amazing to watch, isn't it? It's um, really satisfying to watch your uh, countries of audience. Because obviously, yeah, I have yeah. the podcast now, so but I'm, I'm in the beginning only. But still, it's like uh, now I have six countries, and it's like, wow, people listen to me from six different countries. That's really cool. Yeah, it? yeah. Yeah, it's good as well. We've just started, um, when we launched the summit, we've just started running a few Facebook ads as well in, in other countries. I'm not, I'm not spending massive amounts, you know, a couple of quid a day. But yep. it's amazing how much that does have a big impact on getting you more downloads and reaching more people in more countries. Yeah. Um, you know, the Americans love listening to an English voice. I'm sure if you were to put some ads into your home country, you'd get some more, uh, get some more downloads straight away. You wouldn't um, you know, so it has a big impact. Much. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you speak better English than I do. <laughs> Well, so yeah, I'm very talented. <laughs> I'm joking. That's like, yeah, that's cool. No, but uh, Facebook ads, um, that's something I was looking into as well lately, so sort of learning a bit more about it. Because they are so powerful, but it is um, all about as well a patience with them, isn't it? Sometimes you, you need to do some split testing and things like that, just to yep. see it works and um, a bit of campaign on the audience. And yeah, but it's a really interesting game. It is they basically we need to adapt with the new ways of marketing, putting yourself there, being out there, and all that. And and Facebook is as it's just one of them, and it's just the way it's going to go now. So sooner you start. Yep better for you and for your business so fantastic definitely definitely content marketing is you know content is king is what they say content marketing is actually really king um as i say forty thousand average 28 day reach and now it's three hundred and sixty thousand as of this morning and that's just purely from doing a facebook live every day but it was just me back in 2016 i've now got um a social media manager a content writer a landing page web developer a Facebook ads and Google ads guy who have just got in the last month. I've just got a landing page lady as well. Who's going to be, who's one of my mortgage clients who's going to be doing some stuff with click funnels for us. Um, because marketing is the most important function in a business. It doesn't matter whether you're doing it free or paid, but yeah. if you can spend a pound and get two pound back, that's good marketing. That's um, but without marketing, you've got no sales, you've got no administration, you've got no finances. Uh, and that's, you know, a few of the principles I teach my mentees. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Without marketing, how can people how can people know you, about you or your product if you don't market yourself? And as you said, if it's a paid or it's organic, it's a natural. It doesn't matter. You need yep. to, you need to have a marketing. So um, definitely. And um, oh, I lost my question. <laughs> I had the question in my head, thinking, well, "Don't forget to." Ask, and now I lost it. Ah! Give me one second. Give me one second. That's all right. What happens? Do you want me to talk about buy to let as well? Because we didn't, we spoke about residential, but you didn't talk about buy to let stuff. Do you want me to tell you the differences yeah, I want, with buy to let? Go back as well, like not back, but go like back. So what is the what is the difference? But I had a question and now I lost it. Um, I ah, it will come to you. It's one of those weird things that just randomly pops into your head when you can't think about it. I've done that so many times when I'm doing podcasts. It's just one of those. It's called crazy called moment. Aha! Uh -huh. Did you know that in psychology? <laughs> is it really? Yeah, I I was shocked. I, I had a poem name. Because it's like a, you, you go, aha, you know, like, yeah. And it actually it's called moment, aha. Because I used yeah. to think a lot, people call me Dori sometimes. Someone told me that, oh, Lenka, this is actually a real thing. I was like, what? I was like, I Googled that. It's a real thing. <laughs> I was like, I was shocked. I was like, okay. <laughs> nice. Didn't know that. There Sorry. you go. Everybody on your podcast has now got an insight. We no longer call you Dory. We all call. We no longer call you Lenka. We all call you Dory. <laughs> <laughs> Stitch yourself right up now. 
<laughs> oh no, I might just cut that bit out. <laughs> you know, you know what gif you're going to be getting on all your posts now on social media. You're just going to see me probably in gifts of glory. <laughs> <laughs> no one, yeah, but no one will know why. They'll be thinking that you are just weirdo because I can cut that bit out, and they'll be like, "What's Kat doing? Why is it?" Don't cut this bit out. This is gold podcast content. <laughs> Lenka being called Dory. <laughs> it's very important. Lenk's, Lenk's becoming a brand as well now, you know, like people need to know what, what, why Lenka is associated with Dory, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so shall we go back to your uh, to the um, uh, mortgage? Because I lost my question. So, uh, Gary, can you uh, maybe tell us a little bit more now about getting a mortgage for buy two leds, please? Yeah, of course. So, um, for many years, as a first-time buyer, you weren't able to get buy-to-let mortgages. Mm -hmm. But because of property prices, and you know, a few a couple of years ago, because of property prices, because of bank and mum and dad, because of all these people who perhaps are able to save a deposit but can't meet the affordability criteria for a residential home, you can or could or potentially, depending on your circumstances be able to get a buy to let mortgage as a first time buyer. And the key things and the most important things are it could be possible with a 15% deposit. Majority of lenders will want you to have at least a 25 de de ah, will at least want you to have a 25% deposit. Put your teeth in Gary. Um, <laughs> and that's the um, in an ideal world, you know, 25% deposit opens it up to way more lenders. Mm. Uh, but then everything that makes the mortgage amount that you're going to get is dependent on the rent that the property receives. Your income doesn't really come into it. There are some lenders out there who don't require you to have any income, a few, not a lot. There are some lenders who require you to have an income, and that can be a little. And then majority of lenders will want you to have at least £25,000 a year as a salary if you're employed, as net profit if you're a sole trader, as salary and dividends if you're an owner of a limited company business. So in an ideal world, 25 grand a year income, 25% deposit. And then everything is dependent on the rental income that the property receives. Uh, and that's because it's the rent that ultimately ends up paying the mortgage. Now, it's a difficult one to go on on a podcast in terms of how they calculate the rental or how they calculate the mortgage amount based on the rental income, but I'll try. So let's say for example, um, the first thing is, is the lenders want to have a stress test. Mm -hmm. So let's say you get, for argument's sake, percentages meaning nothing, for information purposes only, let's say that you get an interest rate or one gets an interest rate of 2% on their buy to let the mortgage company isn't going to calculate their calculations based on that 2%. Because what happens if interest rates go up? What happens if your deal expires and you can't get another deal? What happens if you don't have a tenant for three months? So they then do a stress test based on an interest rate, which is going to be more likely five, five and a half percent. In some cases, it could be less, but majority of them will do it based on five and five and a half. Mm -hmm. So, when they're calculating the interest only mortgage payment that they're applying to work out their calculations, it's always going to be on a higher interest rate, which means you're going to be able to borrow less. So it's just basically taking into account again, the importance of speaking to somebody because what you can then do is understand the calculation of saying based on this rental income, I can borrow this much. And once you understand that, because the rental income has to cover the mortgage by on average 145%. Right. So let's say that the interest only mortgage payment uh, was going to be a thousand pounds using the calculations, using the stress test. The mortgage lender would want you to be getting at least 1400, 1450 as rental income because they want that coverage yeah but no tenants or for breaks or anything else does that make sense yeah 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 it does yeah so that's where it's so key once you understand the calculations and what i do is i've got a spreadsheet and we teach people how to do it and everything because then you're able to go out and you're able to look at it and say to the estate agent how much does this property rent for and you can quickly get your phone out and do a quick calculation and go okay 
that one's not feasible based on the deposit that I've got. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, something in something in Essex where I am, what will rent for eight hundred pound a month will probably cost you two two hundred and fifty grand. Whereas if you go up north to Bath, or we've got clients who you know. Uh, Bath up north. What we're talking about. If you go up north to Liverpool or Newcastle, or you go left to Bath, um, <laughs> what might cost you two hundred, two hundred fifty grand here might cost you sixty, eighty, ninety, hundred, one fifty there. So that's why lots of people then choose to go and invest up north rather than in the south and near the capital because the, the it isn't as much. Um, but starting with a good buy to let is always a good place to go it's much easier if you've got a couple of buy to lets to then start launching into other sexy strategies like service accommodation or um, HMOs or anything at all on those lines because you've got proof as a tenant as a landlord right right so buy to let is something as you said you, you, you would say that it's nice to start with is that more simple um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple buy to lets is, is the easiest thing. Because I'm, because I'm a business owner first, I only do simple buy to lets. I'm not interested in all the, the sexy strategy stuff. Um, we do a bit of land development as well. Sorry. Say again? <laughs> no, I said that they come, the other sexy strategies, they come also with a lot of work. And that's, if that's not something you want to do, or at least not at the moment, why would you put yourself into a full time job? Another full time exactly. job. Exactly. You have a lot on your plate anyway. So, yeah, I'm very Exactly. Do- yeah, the single letter yeah. a bit more simple, especially when you're using an agent to run it. You've got a nice tenant, you're in, hopefully no issues. Um, it's a bit more simpler life, isn't it, with them, actually. But definitely, you're obviously on your plate. So for you, it's to just balance it up, isn't it, with, so you can actually run businesses and family and all that. <laughs> Exactly. I can't take any more on. I'd go mad. <laughs> and that's what I, uh, you know, when I lost my question before, uh, or my point, that is actually what this is why I actually wanted to say. You know, when you were explaining about your um, your team and then you have someone just for, you know, the uh, content build, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how I want to say that that's something to learn for us as well is that, um, you know, I was always, like, as I always said, that you are very, very busy and you are showing as well, like, it's, it's hard to balance it, but you're obviously trying your best and all that. And that's a way of doing it. You're outsourcing. So you outsource and you leverage. And that is, that's a huge key, isn't it? It's an outsourcing. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. It's, it's one of the things I try and inspire my mentees to do because often going self-employed is really scary. And when you become a self-employed mortgage broker, it's, you know, you've, you've got to try and find your own income and everything else. But 80% of being a mortgage broker is administration that with a bit of training, anybody could do. The 20% is probably the bit that we all love. Um, it's the bit that brings in the most income, speaking to people, you know, doing all of that. But everything else is just administration and paperwork. And the big thing that I'm an advocate of is you put your 80% of effort into the 20% that gets the most amount of results and you leverage everything else. Mm. And you might see it as a cost. But if you're, you know, for example, one guy who's been in the industry, one of my mentees, he on average has earned about 100 grand a year the last couple of years. Um, I've worked with him for about the last six months during this corona environment as well. He's just recruited in the last three months of PA as from March after lots of pushing him to do it. And he's now doing on average 240 grand a year. So he's more than doubled his income as a result of better marketing, better systems, better processes, leverage, growth, because you're able to do more of the bits that you love rather than taking three times longer to do the crappy paperwork that you don't. Exactly. Uh, not, especially if you want to grow, isn't it? Like uh, as Rob Moore always said that if you want to if you want to grow, you need to learn to let go. And exactly. like you keep doing things uh, like IGTs for those beginners. So IGTs it's an abbreviation for income generating tasks. And if you are focusing, if you're doing still things you don't like doing just for the sake of it, or just because it has to be done, and you don't outsource it, you are stuck doing things you don't want to do necessarily because you're thinking, oh, that that, that just has to be done. Instead of thinking, right, I'm much better doing this, and that actually makes me money so there you go give this to somebody else to do which means that it allows you to focus more on the income generating task and you can go so yeah it all makes sense exactly yep yeah. definitely well done so yeah we have a lot to learn from you see in many ways <laughs> <laughs> okay so Gary, what will be like your top tips from gary <laughs> or what are we talking life business social media mortgages what how, where do you want me to spend my top tips me, that's a good point. I, I told you that you're just so multi-talented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's start with what you took. Your three top tips 
and maybe we can do a few more. So let's print up tips on a um, mortgage for a uh, budget mortgage. For example. So I'd say I'd say my three top tips that apply to all people who want to get mortgages. Okay. Um, number one is going to be preparing and thinking early. Don't leave it till last minute. Uh, second one is going to be guard your credit score and constantly keep looking at your credit reports. Um, you know, you've got Noddle, Experian, Equifax. You've got Check My File is the one that we use yeah. and we recommend because it encompasses everybody. Um, and you can get thirty day free trials and things like that, but at the end of the day, for paying £10 a month, knowing that you've not got any problems and you're on the voters' roll is actually a thing I didn't mention. Being on the voters' roll can have a real good impact on your credit score because it shows the lenders where you're living. So that's a, uh, another top tip inside the second top tip. Um, <laughs> and my third top tip would be speak to an expert in the strategy that you want to follow. Because I see so many people going into property groups on social media and saying, can I speak to a mortgage broker? That's like walking into a hospital and saying, can I speak to a doctor? Yeah. What have you got wrong with you? You know, it's like, do, is, it, is it your hand? Is it your heart? Is it your leg? Is it your knee? Is it your shoulder? There's consultants and specialists in each of the areas. Good and point. you want to speak to the expert in doing what you want to do. And much as, you know, I'm on all social media channels and you referred to me as an expert i'm by far from an expert because you've got i'm probably more of an expert on facebook than anywhere else but there's people who know way more about it than i do i know what works for me but on facebook alone you've got facebook page profile groups stories um you've now got this new live you've now got this new community talking function you've got watch parties and that's just one thing social media six channels you're like what the hell one and you've got instagram platform. igtv feed stories that you've got four things just on instagram so it's like you can't be an expert in all things and if you want to get better or you want to do one particular property strategy then work with a broker who knows that particular st property strategy inside out which is why i'm building my brokerage in the way in which we're building it Amazing, fantastic, great tips. Yeah, as you said, that you you need to have a specialist for us. Uh, for specialist, like many people, I I heard that because obviously I was in a service accommodation business, and um, many people uh, they didn't realize that if you want a if you want a mortgage for your uh, service accommodation, um, for example, a uh, property, you need to find a broker who specialize that on service accommodation. It's a new strategy. It's a sexy strategy, and not everybody um, could help with that. So if yep. you don't specify, if you don't look for the specialist, then yeah, it might be harder. So that's a great thing. Yeah, and that's, Sally on my team works with probably one of the leading experts on service accommodation who we both know. Um, she's one of our clients. We do all that. If we do all her stuff um, and look after her and a lot of her mentees and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And we're now going on to our mastermind and, and being the recommended preferred broker for that. So yeah, we do it all, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> fortunately for us. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately for, for those who need mortgage is that. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay, Gary, so that's your top tips on the mortgage. What would be your, uh, if I may now, your top tips on uh, social media then? Social media. Number one, which is a really simple one, is try and have the same at on all your social media channels. Hmm. Um, because so I'm at Gary Das on all my social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, just try and get your name safe and secure, uh, because then it makes it easier for people to find you and for talking about, you know, if you've got hmm. underscores and dots in one, but not on another, change it so that it's congruent and, and decent. Um, yep. that's something I number two is going to be. Say again. Sorry, so that's, that's something I made. You made me think straight away. Like right after this, I'm gonna go on Instagram and change my name. <laughs> <laughs> and make it easy in terms of like your name is hard to spell. So okay. if you put all three names on there, that's gonna make it a nightmare trying to do that and launch it on a podcast or yeah. something like that. Yeah, but you, you know, know what? Actually, Gary, this is a really interesting one because I thought um, I hated my name. Like in you know, not with, with respect. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> with respect, <laughs> I'm really a pain, especially living in the UK where uh, trying. When I said to someone, my name is Jenko Yenchema Bednarikova, they go like pardon. So I need to spell it, but it's not only J E N C O, but it's a J for Juliet, E for Echo, and for November, and it takes 
takes half an hour just to spell my name, minimum. And it's like, I go through that every single day a lot. Uh, yeah. but, so I never really liked it. However, I start finding an advantage of it is that, um, I'll give you one example because we both know Rob Moore. So I'll just give you that example. I was um, in the multiple strip of uh, income for the, uh, when I went there for the first time and I joined Progressive uh, Online, uh, Progressive Group, uh, not long before that. And I was like, you know, like uh, engaging and all that. And when I came to uh, the uh, multiple stream of income, um, and I and the role model, it goes like, you know, it does anybody has any question? I raised my hand, and he said, "You're the girl with the long name." And I was like, for the for once, for once, something good came out of it. <laughs> 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 he said, "You're the one with a long name." So it's like, for, to be fair, you know, like I really never, I never liked it because it's too long, but now I feel like it stands out. <laughs> yeah, definitely, without a shadow of a doubt. But you know, for example, an example that I use is. Like you don't even need to use your name. You can be, you could be an at the body coach is obviously one that everybody knows. Joe Wicks, you know, yeah. you probably, yeah. as soon as you say Joe Wicks, you think the body coach. And as soon as you yeah. say the body coach, you think Joe Wicks. So if you can own your personal brand, you know, Rob's the disruptive entrepreneur. It's probably quite a long at name to be having everywhere. But <laughs> you know, if you can have something that just is, is congruent across all channels, it makes it easier for people to find you. Amazing. Yeah, very true. Um, second thing is then going to be content marketing, doing it, starting it, getting it out there, talking about personal brand, what's the most important to you, what you stand for, what you stand against, the expertise. Even if you're at the beginning of your property journey, share the lessons that you're learning because somebody else is still behind you. Um, even sharing that and talking about it because as you learn and develop and you grow, you will have credibility. You, we all know the stories of, you know, Karate Kid, if everybody's seen it. And don't tell me you haven't seen Karate of Kid. Of course. Myself. Of course I did. Good news off, for that. <laughs> exactly. But you all know the story of he couldn't do karate and he finished chopping the guy's head off with his foot. You know? <laughs> it's, but you follow the whole story. It's just that film. So take people on your journey and on your film and share going from beginner to winner. Um, buying your first property, doing all of that, because people will buy into it and it gives you more credibility. And in order to be able to do that, the third thing is going to be consistency. Mm. Um, there's no point in doing, you know, it's better to do one post a week than it is to just do it here, there and everywhere. Yeah. The big thing that I know has made a massive impact on my reach over the course of the last 10, 11 weeks is the fact that every day, eight o'clock, even when I don't want to, I'm going live on Facebook. Um, and I made the commitment to do it daily, but you could just do Wednesday, work out Wednesday, every morning, 8 a.m., you know, or every Wednesday at 8 a.m. You could do Sunday sales. You could do um, Friday finance. It don't really matter. Just do it consistently at the same point. Yeah. And people will learn that you are there. And the big thing that social media are looking for, or Facebook is looking for in particular, is return viewership. So if you do it consistently, they want you, they want the same audience to keep coming back That's because it. social media, it's all about community. Yeah. So yeah build yeah. your own community. You don't need thousands. You don't need millions of followers. Yeah. You just need a small number of people who are really interested in you. Amazing. That's a really good tip. Really good tip. And uh, consistency, as you said, that's something what um, I've been struggling with uh, for, for, for a while. And I think, you know, I might be getting that now, but the, um, what, what, what I've been learning as well is that, uh, sorry, let me start again. I was one of those who used to do post, 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 nothing. Post, 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 nothing. Post, nothing. Post, post, nothing. And just it's been all over the place. And uh, some and people, uh, people like you, try to explain that even if you're not doing it once a day, just don't. It's it's just just do it once a week. Or but do it consistently. Just just don't and don't miss out. If you said to yourself, I'm going to be posting once a week, just don't miss out. Just do it once a week. And and that's that's something what um uh, I needed to really learn to actually. I was like, right, okay, I don't have to necessarily post once a day if I don't have the time for it or if I don't find the time for it. Let's call it this way. Um, but yeah. It's um, being consistent means maybe even once a week, as you've said. So it's very important. Treat your, treat your social media like a child. Ah. If, I, if, I go and, if I go and tell my child off, they are not going to be my best friend for a period of time. No. And not being consistent on show, social media or not showing up is basically telling social media off. So if you care for it, love it, look after it, give it, 
love when they need love, have fun on it when they need to, when you need to have fun, all that kind of stuff. Then it rewards you by hopefully being nice. So cool. Okay, so now we got the tips, top tips from Gary in regards to mortgage and in regards to a um, social media. That's amazing, Gary. So uh, thank you so much for all those tips and everything. I always ask every single guest on my show as well on um, what uh, book would you have to recommend to others? Do you have any? What book would I mm-hmm. recommend to others other than mine? Oh, there's so many. Um, <laughs> mine, I love that. <laughs> do you know the one? Do you know the one that I would say that I think has had the biggest impact on me? Because I know you're into this kind of stuff as well. And I would say that having not done any personal development from 2006 until 2015, then getting into personal development, mindset, affirmations, gratitude, law of attraction, all that kind of stuff. I think even if you think it's a bit woo woo, listen to the secret. The secret, yes, hundred percent. Because you, when you, when you visualize it, when you think that you've already got it, when you imagine yourself already having it, your brain can't tell the difference. And I think everything that has happened, the success that I've had, is because of I've just taken consistent action. I've surrounded myself with the right type of people. I've perceived it and believed it and therefore miraculously it just weird things happen. You just let the universe and it just does its stuff and brings it to you. It's amazing. I'm, I'm a huge believer in that. Yeah. So I'm, I, I understand, but you know what I found uh, talking to different people about the book secret is that many people uh, misunderstand this book and they think that on, if you just, if you just believe things going to happen and I found as well, like you need to believe, you need to believe as you said, you need to visualize, you need to, um, make, you need to uh, read your, uh, um, aviation every single day and all that is like, it's so, so, so important. However, the action as well, isn't it? Like without action, Universe, universe, good. You could be waiting. I think it also links into your subconscious brain, and it's also the fact of when you when you know what you're aiming for, your and I think the other thing as well for people, the reason why it doesn't work is because they're not open to the opportunity of it actually happening and working. Mm -hmm. Because the universe and the world will put opportunities in front of your face, but too many people are closed off or don't take the action in order to be able to take up that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, So you know, for example. I said one day that I was going to make Rob Moore my mate. Um, probably back in 2016 when I first listened to his book, um, Life Leverage, and started listening to his podcast. Now he's my main mentor. I WhatsApp him. I'm in business partnership with Progressive for Mortgages. I'm his lead trainer on social media. Um, we have chats. I go to his house, you know, all that kind of stuff. Last year I said that I really wanted someone who could be my integrator which is someone who loves the admin doing the do taking all my crazy ideas and putting them into action um an advisor who joined me this was probably i've got a reminder actually on it about my phone on my phone a couple of weeks ago i love facebook memories and i made a public declaration that i really wanted this person in my business and the reasons why and i started to think about it and got clear on who they needed to be in august andrew came and joined my brokerage um and he was a branch manager at Halifax for 12 years. And as of the 1st of May, he is my integrator. He is running the day to day. He is looking after the team. And it's just about understanding all these little elements that when you get clear, you know, you could say that that happened more by luck than judgment, mm-hmm. but luck is labor under correct knowledge. Labor is la- luck under correct knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, or sorry, luck is labor under correct knowledge. Um, and it's just about taking the required action and things will happen and things will come in and you just have to spot the opportunities. So the secret. No, it's the secret. The secret. I love it. Absolutely love it. I am a huge, huge believer in that as well. I have so many stories as well where you, you just something I visualize, something, something I picture, something I dream of and suddenly it's in my life. It's like, wow, that stuff works. That really works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you read about the book? Have you heard the book, A Magic? This is the, basically like a second part of Secret. Aha. No. It's the same people, I believe, as well. So it's called- Rhonda, Rhonda Byrne. Oh, yeah. Well, then, it's, a, the, it's called The Magic. And what I learned right. in that one, it's basically, it's the second part of, from After Secret. So in Secret, it starts with um, 
you know, visualizing, picturing and all that. And then with the magic, they give you, I'll give you one example. Yeah. So you, let's say you have your favorite stone or little crystal or something. And if you don't just go on the beach, pick up any, it's calling you or something. Yeah. Pick up the stone. The stone will symbolize your, um, your, your dreams and your thoughts. So basically you go to bed every single day. You take that, you take that stone and uh, you, sorry, no, it's the gratitude. So you, you and you uh, tell yourself things you are grateful for. And let's say 10, 10 things, but you, it could be anything, including things like thanks for my eyes so I can see. Thank you for my legs so I can walk. Thanks for my car so I can get to work and make money or anything, anything, anything. And, and it's just to uh, start, it's basically like a little physical um exercise on uh, gratitude and appreciation as well which is linked to all the all the things you have said as well so and that's an interesting one as well oh it's- cool <laughs> nice the magic of life yeah yeah <laughs> amazing cool love magic <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good. So you. So so recommendation from Gary Das will be self-employed mortgages and the secret. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Gary. And uh, I always ask that as well. Um, so if you, if uh, someone wants to watch something, um, what would you recommend to watch? That could be anything in regards to properties and in regards to uh, mindset. Um, do you have any favorite uh, documentary or um, biography or series or anything? absolutely anything something for somebody to watch so many um i always think well it depends what you want to do there's so many great series and everything out there um what is a great documentary of just keeping things simple do you know what i would say if you want to watch something that's quite inspiring and get a clearer idea of just the simplistic ways around investment or life or anything at all on those lines, go and watch the Warren Buffett documentary on Netflix. I, um, I, that was in my mind. I don't know why. And you said that that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, there's loads of things that I love. Like I love the personal challenge of fitness and I'm really into all the CrossFit game stuff that's on Netflix as well, because I just think it's insane what those guys and girls put themselves through yeah. and it's something I would love to do and probably will train for at some point when I've got a little bit more free time, maybe next year and we're allowed out of our houses and stuff. When you um, outsource more. <laughs> say again? When you outsource more. So free. You- yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think, yeah, I just think there's a good few things that you can watch. Billions is a great business series. Be- if you're watching bill- Billions. 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 That's on Netflix. That's a great not Netflix doc, uh, series that you can watch. Um, I Am Your Guru with Tony Robbins. That's a great little documentary as well. Yeah, there's, some, there's loads of great things out there. You can watch. And you said Warren Buffett on Netflix. Yeah, oh. Becoming Warren Buffett. Oh, that one's on Netflix as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, Becoming Warren Buffett. Buffett. Yeah, I watched it on Amazon. I didn't know. When I was watching it, it was not on Netflix. Oh, maybe it's on Amazon then. Maybe it's not on Netflix. It's on Netflix or Amazon. Or somewhere, yeah. It is out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What about it, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I love that the country. Isn't it fascinating when this guy, he, um, he's uh, still one of the richest men in the world and he still buys his um, McDonald's, no? Like his wife gave him money for it and depends on what he's buying, depends on the day he had. It's like how much he can yeah. actually afford. It's like... <laughs> how much he can spend. He's like, what? You're buying a five dollar breakfast, mate. You got billions. Just treat yourself and have an extra hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, dude, I had a bad day. <laughs> Financially, that's just amazing. But yeah. yeah, inspiring in a way. Okay, fantastic. Oh, Gary. So I think we covered. Um, I think we covered everything what we wanted today. Is there anything, um, anything you wanted to add uh, for those beginners out there, or do you think we've had covered everything? No, I think we've covered absolutely everything. If, if obviously. Yeah, absolutely nothing at all. If anybody wants to reach out to me directly and ask me any questions, then of course, feel free to do so. I'm generally somewhere at some point in the time or my team are. <laughs> so I will pop your details on because I'm going to use this if you don't mind on the YouTube channel as well. So if you don't yeah. mind, I can add the details on the actual video. But for the for the podcast listeners, do you want to say um, how to contact you? So what is your social media and how to contact you? Yeah, of course. So um, I'm at Gary Das on all my social media channels personally. Um, if you want to get in contact with the business, then we are Active Mortgage. Uh, we've got Active.Mortgage as the website. You've got YouTube. You've got Facebook, Instagram, 
all the channels for both the business brand and my personal brand. Um, come and hit us up, ask a question, and we'll be more than happy to help and answer. Amazing, very kind. Thank you so much. Oh, Gary. Well, I think we'll I think we've covered everything now, so I won't keep you much longer. Uh, so I can't tell you how grateful I am for you coming on the show today, and I'm sure you're going to help a lot and lots of people. And um, yeah, so and I'm sure we'll uh, stay in touch, and I will watch your, I will keep watching your journey, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm wishing you good luck with absolutely everything you do, with absolutely everything. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me, Lenka, and right back at you with all of that as well. It's been good to see you from meeting you at the first property event right the way through till now doing your podcast and putting yourself out there and getting clear on your property strategies and everything. So it's all good. Oh, and it's like, Keep you know, we, mentioned about, we met as well when we, because we were, we became friends on social media. Yeah. So we never met in person. And then the first time we have met, and you signed your book, you gave me a book and you signed it for me as well. <laughs> and now we <laughs> podcast together. So the reason why I'm mentioning that as well now is because that all happened because of social media. So if there's no other proof for anybody other that you use social media, then this is one of the proofs. Because it's like, yeah, we knew each other before we met, then we met once and, and now we're doing a podcast together. So we go <laughs> no brainer yeah appreciate you coming on the show again so thank you Gary. thank you for having me have a lovely rest of the day you too see you soon bye and what what when we go who where who what where how <laughs>